Hello, my name is Dylan, and in today's tutorial, we'll be looking at how to use the new lens flare shader for Blender and Cycles. Uh, this lens flare shader has a real time preview and is highly customizable. Before we get into the details of how to uh, create and use the lens flare shader, uh, just a little bit about its history. This was first written for the Renderman shader language by Larry Gritz and Tony Abadatta. I hope I've uh, pronounced you guys' names correctly. I've ported it to OSL for Blender, uh, preserving uh, pretty much all its original features and adding a few along the way. Let's look at some of the features of this lens flare shader. I have a copy of Blender open. Uh, in this pane here, we can see the real-time preview from the lens shader. And if I move this empty and grab it with the G key, and move the empty, you can see that in the real-time preview pane, the lens flare is updating automatically. And as I move off the screen, uh, the lens flare disappears as you would expect it and fades out to nothing. Uh, if we move it into the center of the screen, you can see as I move it down here, the lens flare elements are, are pointing up as you'd expect them. We can move it off to the side here, and uh, you can see the lens free elements uh, pointing up into the sky. So it's very easy uh, to use and also gives you a lot of control uh, of how the final scene will look. If I hit the render button now, I've mapped it to a, a different key than usual on the shortcut. Usually it's F12. I've mapped mine to the comma key. Uh, we can see the scene rendering now and now the lens flare elements are being uh, rendered and these will be uh, composited on top of the final image uh, which should come up any moment now and now there's a final compositing just being performed and we can see the final image it's not actually uh, necessary to do a final compositing action but uh, if you do use the compositor you have the ability to mask out the lens flare for instance if I move the uh, light position to just below the horizon of the earth here we will see that well, if I move it way below, we'll see that the lens flare is still shining through the earth, which is not something that you really want. But if I drop it down here and uh, render the scene again, we can set up the post compositing so that the lens flare is actually masked out. And uh, we can just see the scene rendering now, uh, rendering all the elements. And in the final scene, we should see that the lens flare should predominantly be masked out in the final composite and it's compositing now and there we can see that it's mostly marked out we just have a little bit poking through which is which is pretty much what we want if we moved it even further down uh, the resulting image would be entirely composited out and we can see that effect if we look at this quick animation uh, with the lens flare elements shining through the trees as we move forward here we can see that the lens flare blinks as the sun passes behind the trees and it's completely disappeared for there. Now this happens automatically which is uh, very useful because for a complex scene you don't really want to be having to key the intensity of the lens flare so it's possible to to highly automate this process. Uh, some of the other features of the lens flare if we look over in this pane over here uh, this is the actual lens flare shader itself and just a bit about uh, the setup it's quite a simple setup if we look at what we've actually got here in the view we've got a camera here we've got a lens flare plane and the lens flare shader actually draws the lens flare elements itself onto this uh, transparent pane and then you can look at your scene you of course can put any elements in the scene uh, that you'd like uh, we could add a we could add a monkey into the scene for example uh, add mesh and Suzanne and now we can see uh, we have Suzanne in the scene and we can uh, move the lens flare around accordingly so having a look at the scene again we have the camera we have the lens flare we have whatever is in our 3d scene at the time it is, uh, of course in this example it is just a simple earth image and we have this position uh, that represents where the lens flare is emanating from 
So let's click on to the lens flare plane, which in the outliner we can see here is our lens flare plane object. And in this window over here in the in the node editor, we can see the actual lens flare shader. You can see the node setup is fairly simple. It consists of the usual material output for the plane. It consists of the shader itself, which we'll look at in a moment. And it also consists uh, of an input, uh, a couple of input nodes here to represent the light position. So as I move this uh, empty around the scene, we can see that these values update automatically. And we use drivers to uh, get these values in here. And in the tutorial, we'll cover how to do that. It's, it's not too complicated. So some of the features of the lens flare shader, first the outputs, you can see it's quite easy to add up to, add to your material, uh, to this lens plane material. You simply just connect the, uh, the shader output directly to it. However, if you want to, all the elements that make up the lens flare, for instance, if we just zoom up here, the lens flare itself is made up of a bloom, which is this bright area in the middle. It is made up of a starburst, which are these star shapes here. It is made up of a rainbow, which is very subtly added in here. If I increase the intensity of the rainbow to 0.3, for example, we can see that the rainbow is very clearly visible in this image now. Let's just uh, reduce that down to the original value. And in addition to the rainbow, the lens flare of the course is made up of all these spots. And there are five types of spots. There is a, uh, a disc type of spot. Uh, we can see they're the solid discs. There is a, a ring type of spot. And there's a we can <laughs> barely see a ring in here. Uh, there is also a, a blurred type of spot and a spot with a hole in it. And these are these are synthesized automatically so that when we uh, look at the uh, when we set up the lens flare shader, these are generated for us automatically. But in addition to the synthesized spots, you can also define your own uh, images to use as the spots for the lens flare. In fact, you can set up images for all the elements. And so just by changing the mix from the synthesized to a fully uh, image based mix, we can now see we've got more of a hexagonal lens flare here. If I just move this uh, empty down to a position where we can see the spots a little more clearly, we can we can see those see how these are actually made of hexagons now. If I put this back to the synthesized version, we can see that's the fully synthesized version. As we move the slider, whoops, as we move the slider uh, fully to a factor of one, now we only have the image based uh, spot elements. And if we look here, you can just create any uh, image you want, a JPEG or a ping image, and uh, you can use anything for the spots, and, uh, and, and including the starburst and the bloom and the rainbow. So you can, it's a highly customized lens flare. Lens flare. You can essentially get any, any type of shape that you want in here, including things like a heart. So if we come along here and if I type heart into this position, now we can see our lens flare is actually uh, consisting of hearts. So you can get some quite interesting artistic effects uh, going along here. And you can see it's all uh, updating in real time as well. Let's render that one out and see how that looks. So for instance, you might have a sun with smiley faces uh, forming part of your lens flare element. You can see it's reasonably uh, quick to render. The lens flare themselves are usually used fairly sparingly, and so uh, it doesn't ta add too much to your render time, really. And here's the composited image uh, coming up now uh, with the heart elements in it. Let's set this back to the original setting. If I just type in the name of the texture again, so this should be hex holy, and we can see that the uh, texture is now being read in. Now we won't go through all the uh, settings on here. There, there are quite a few, but they're all quite self-explanatory. But let's just look at a couple more. Uh, the shader will automatically calculate the aspect ratio of the image. So if you change the aspect ratio uh, of, of your scene, 
the lens flare shader work, can work that out automatically. So if there's a zero in the aspect ratio, it works that out automatically. However, if you want to create something like an anamorphic lens flare effect, you might change the ratio uh, to one to two, for example. And if we just move the this over to an easier spot to see, we can see that the lens flare elements now have been stretched out. They're a lot wider. So let's put that back to zero for automatic. Uh, in addition to that, you can also tint the lens flare uh, directly from the shader itself. So let's give it more of a yellow tint. And now the uh, now these spots are coming out more yellow. You could of course replace your own images for the bloom and rainbow just to get the kind of tinting that you want. Uh, but if you're looking at tinting the spots, they're very they're very easy to tint. So we can just move those back again. Uh, another interesting feature uh, to look at is that you can add a random uh, variation to the spots. So you'll notice that uh, in the textures, these spots are all grayscale, but we can automatically vary the color. So if we want uh, no variation, if we just put a zero in here, you'll see that the spots all come out in the same grayscale that they were defined in. Uh, but if we add a, a very large number in here, like five, we can see that now there's a tremendous amount of color variation in addition to uh, whatever the base tint that you have applied to the image to begin with. So you can get a lot of customization from these lens flares without uh, having to go to too much effort. If I just put this down to a number like 1.5 again. Uh, what else can we look at on here? You can change the seed. So these are randomly generated. You can uh, try different seeds to get different combinations till you find a combination uh, that you're happy with. And in addition, the spot images themselves, maybe if I can just turn off the, uh, the earth plane just so we can see the, the spots more clearly. You can define uh, how many of each of the types of disks, rings, blots, or holes in the disks that you want. For example, say if you wanted uh, a lens flare made up of entirely rings, you turn these disks down to zero, turn the blots down to zero, and turn the holes down to zero. And now you can see the lens flare is made entirely of rings. But maybe you want a mixture of rings and blots. So uh, we could add three rings and three blots. Now there should be 50% of these. We're, we're having 50 spots in total. 50% of them will be rings and 50% of them will be blots. But we could say, well, let's make it twice as likely that we're going to have some rings. So we could send that to six. And now, statistically, there should be more rings than blots. We could make up it even higher, we could put 20. So we're much more likely to get a ring, uh, and we'll still get the odd blot in here. So there's a lot of uh, customization that can be done with this shader. And a lot of this uh, came with the original uh, RenderMan version. Really, the only thing that has been added into this is the ability to define user images. So you can define all your uh, user rings. We'll just set that back to the synthesized version. And the addition to change the aspect ratio. And uh, also, all of these outputs have been made available. So you can get any element for further processing you want, or if you want to do some special compositing. So uh, that's probably enough for the overview for the lens shader. Uh, now let's get into how we can actually create one ourselves.